All amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. We'll have a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press today. And we'll also take a look at some comments that have been left on the channel recently by viewers. Before I begin, a big thanks to all of the people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's by buying me a coffee, whether it's through the new Super Thanks option or the Super Chat option on YouTube, new channel members, people that have joined the channel recently, recently and also to my longer term supporters on Patreon. Thank you very much for that support. Now straight into the news and the tragic death of two civil guard officers last weekend that were trying to stop the drug trade in the south of Spain still dominating headlines. As we know in the south of Spain in the province of Cardiff there is a serious drug trafficking problem and the situation is not helped by the fact that the government has cut funding to police forces trying to stop that drug trafficking. And as we can read here, drug traffickers even celebrated Minister Malaska's dismantling of the elite anti-drug unit. Let's see if the sons of leave us alone, one was quoted as saying. The death of the two Guadifibil officers in Barabate highlights the lack of material and personnel resources in the area. In 2022, despite warnings from the Guadifibil, the Ministry of the Interior dismantled the Narco Trafficking Coordination Body, OCON South. After its dissolution, some of the drug traffickers from the Strait of Gibraltar exchanged several messages of satisfaction with concerning content, knowing that this would allow them to act with greater impunity. Let's see if those leave us alone. Let's see if it's true. I've also heard that, that they're breaking the unit up, but the snitches are left. They're even worse, one of them pointed out in a WhatsApp group. So drug traffickers in the south of Spain, according to that article, celebrating when that anti-drug unit was dismantled. And now many people here in Spain now questioning the minister's motives for breaking up that unit. And some people even suggesting that the minister, Minister Marlaska, has it in for the civil guard here in Spain. Don't know, but those are some of the rumours that are circulating. Now, as we know, the topic of drought here in Spain has been dominating local press for the last few months. Some serious drought issues in some parts of the country, mainly Catalonia and the south of the country, down there in the province of Malaga. And with the summer months just around the corner, some people are asking the question, what impact will the drought have on tourism in places like the Costa del Sol this year? As we can read here, drought threatens tourism on the Costa del Sol. The Costa del Sol faces a paradoxical year in 2024. On one hand, it aims to surpass the 14 million tourists who visited in 2023, its all-time record. On the other hand, it doesn't have enough water even for its population. Data indicates that about 250,000 people along the Malaga coast are already facing restrictions, with 100,000 experiencing nighttime water cuts in 15 municipalities. And, of course, questions arise. Can tourism be accommodated? Will travel travellers continue to come? Will they accept not being able to shower at certain times or having the pool of their rental home empty? Doubts hover over a sector facing a thorny summer, which is essential for the Malaga economy. Last year, it created more than 128,000 jobs and generated more than 19 billion euros in revenue, according to data from the provincial government. Uncertainty surrounds an area thirsty for tourists, but choking on the persistent lack of rain. So remember that statement there, the Costa del Sol, an area thirsty for tourists, but choking on the persistent lack of rain. And some important questions also being asked in that article, like, for example, will tourists continue to come to that area? Will people think twice about going to the Costa del Sol if they can't have a shower when they want, or maybe the pool at their rental home, as we saw, is empty? And let's be honest, the summer in Malaga without high numbers of tourists will be very bad for the local economy. Very bad indeed, I imagine. Another piece of news now when US presidential hopeful Donald Trump is making headlines in Spain today because Trump has said that he will encourage Russia to do whatever the hell it wants with NATO allies 
that don't pay for defense. The likely Republican candidate for the presidency of the United States, Donald Trump, has stated that he will encourage Russia to do whatever the hell it wants against any NATO country that, in his opinion, does not spend enough on collective defense. His comments have triggered alarm and condemnation among allies who still vividly remember the threats against the alliance and the demands for its members to increase their contributions, which the then president amplified during his term. In Brussels, the NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg accused Trump without naming him of undermining the security of those nations. So Trump encouraging Russia to do whatever the hell it wants with NATO countries that don't pay the bill. And sometimes when I hear Mr. Trump speak, I ask myself the question, does he think before he opens his mouth? Or is he one of these people that speaks without caring about the consequences of of his words. But in any case, not good news for some NATO countries should Mr. Trump be re-elected, and hopefully Spain is not one of those countries on Mr. Trump's radar. But let's check and see NATO contribution by country. Number one, United States of America, $811 billion spent, 3.57% of defense expenditure. Then we've got the UK, Germany, France, Italy, Canada, Poland, the Netherlands, and number nine, Spain, only putting in 1.03% of its GDP into defense expenditure. So is that enough for Mr. Trump or not? I don't know, but I might have to have my suitcases packed just in case. And the final piece of news we'll look at today, and it's a piece of news that shows just how seriously Spain takes olive oil. Because as we can read here, prison sentences of three and a half to four years and nine months for selling 70% sunflower oil as extra virgin oil. The National Court has sentenced three men who sold an adulterated mixture as extra virgin olive oil consisting of 70% sunflower oil oil and 30% olive oil. The sentences range from three and a half years to four years and nine months in prison. Since the sentences exceed two years, they will result in their actual imprisonment. In a verdict agreed upon with the prosecution, the three accused have accepted the commission of the crimes of continuous fraud, falsification of commercial documents, and against industrial property. They must also compensate the victims with the amounts they defrauded. So there we go, and as I said, that case highlights highlighting how seriously the Spanish take their olive oil. Get caught messing with the stuff and you can spend close to five years in prison as those people have now found out. So people here in Spain can steal public money, hold illegal referendums, try to separate from the country and hardly anything happens but adulterate olive oil and you end up in prison for close to five years. Seems fair. Now let's have a look at some of the comments that have been left on videos recently. One here from Newsmonger seven new to the channel and here in Spain for two months in Fuengirola and Los Boliches. We are very impressed how clean everything is compared to the UK. No litter at all, not even chewing gum on the pavement. The street cleaners do a wonderful job, but the Spanish people are very respectful of their country and don't leave litter. We've watched families leaving the beach and taking all their rubbish with them. Well done Spain, the UK could learn a lesson. Yeah newsmonger, thanks for the comment. Welcome to Spain and glad to see that you are happy with your clean surroundings down there in the south of Spain, in Malaga, precisely in Fuengirola. And lucky you've found a clean part of Spain to live in, because where I live here on the outskirts of Madrid, it is far from clean. Cigarette butts left all over the ground, outside bars and restaurants, plastic flying around everywhere, paper flying around everywhere too, and the amount of dog poo left around is also quite astounding. So as I said, lucky that you have found a clean part of the country to live in, because the place where I am leaves a lot to be desired, unfortunately. One here from Once Upon a very sad news, deeply sad to watch the video where the people who are recording it are at the same time cheering while the officers are being run over and killed. Yeah, once a Bernadi, thanks for the comment, and you're right, very sad news, that story that came out of Cardiff at the weekend about those police officers who were killed by those drug smugglers in their high-powered boat that ran over the top of them. And equally disturbing were the images of people cheering them on from the sidelines. But that just goes to show some of the scum or gentuza, as they say in Spanish, that the police are dealing with in that part of Spain. 
It's a shame. One here from Mary. Soon Spain and Portugal will have the drug problem out of control and your cities will be just like Canadian and American cities, zombie cities, not very pretty, and the crime will be on the rise. Yeah, Mary, thanks for the comment. I could be wrong, but I don't think the drugs that are turning people into zombies in places in the United States and Canada are the same ones that are being used here. Yes, people here in Spain use illegal drugs like cocaine or cannabis, but those zombie-causing drugs like fentanyl aren't a huge problem here yet. And I'll say that word again, yet. But as I also said a minute ago, I could be wrong, but let's hope that I'm not. One here from Vodka Dave. I have a place in Bol Nuevo Murcia. The coast down there is absolutely stunning. Don't tell anyone though. Yeah, Vodka Dave, thanks for the comment and don't worry, your secret is safe with us. We won't tell anybody about that place down there in Murcia called Bol Nuevo and how fantastic it is. This topic popped up on the live stream yesterday because somebody said that they are going to Murcia for a couple of months, I think, and wanted to know what the best places there are to see. I suggested Murcia City, Cartagena, Bol Nuevo is the one put forward there. Other people said Mataron, also the Mar Menor. So there are plenty of places to see, plenty of things to do in Murcia. So thanks to everybody in the community for sharing their favorite places in the region of Murcia. One here from Jonathan. Come on, Stuart. Carlson is the best among journos in the States in conservative media. I'm on the left, but inquisitive enough to know that it's an important interview. To be uninterested in an interview with one of the most controversial and interesting political figures of the 21st century is tantamount to being incurious. Smart people are supposed to be curious. Yeah, Jonathan, thanks for the comment and this comment coming about because I said the other day that I wasn't interested in that interview that Tucker Carlson had with Russian President Vladimir Putin that was uh, aired the other day. And from what I'm reading on the internet, a lot of people saying that the interview was a waste of time. A fairly soft interview, people are saying that it was. And I saw a bit of the interview yesterday on YouTube, and I have to admit that it did seem fairly bland. And some of the questions that were posed by Mr. Carlson to Mr. Putin were to get answers that some people want to hear. It's all about fitting a narrative that some people want to hear and believe, in my opinion, of course. One here from Harkonnen, not interested in the Putin interview? That's a shame, as that video got more views in one day than this channel will get in a lifetime. Yeah, Harkonnen, thanks for the comment, but I'm not interested in getting the same amount of views that Mr. Tucker Carlson got for his interview with Mr. Putin. But maybe if I became as biased as Tucker Carlson, as one-eyed as Tucker Carlson, I could get similar views. I don't know. But most importantly, at least for me, Harkonnen, is that I got your view and your comment on the channel. So thanks for that. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you always do. If you have anything to add to the conversation today, the comment section is the place for you. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. Harkonnen, and I'll see you in the next video. Hasta luego.